Hey everyone, welcome to episode number five here on the Worldwide Geocaching Podcast, brought to you by My Podcast Radio. I'm your host, Hyper James 52 and Crazy Critter 66 from the studio in Naples, Golden Gate, Florida, the Sunshine State. Grab your favorite beverage and enjoy our episode. <laughs> Okay, here we go. So, we uh, first thing I want to do, I want to share this before I forget about it. And if you're anywhere in the what, Midwest, uh, South, Mid, South, if, if you're anywhere, <laughs> are you confused? Close to Naples or Fort Myers or you know, I mean, in within that driving area of that, every month they have uh, cash and coffee at the Sun. And uh, this month it is Saturday the 23rd of uh, February. And I'll give you some easy directions to it there if you're thinking about going to one of these. I was, we talked about last week about how much, they, you know, they get together and, and talk about different geocaches. And it, you look confused. I'm not confused. Okay. So they talk about different geocachings and... And they, they, some eat breakfast, some drink coffee, some eat breakfast and drink coffee. But some people just go up there to, to meet and greet. Um, I, I've got the, the, this, the easiest address is, uh, it's north at 26 degrees, 12.521. And west, 081 degrees, uh, 46.204. You only got to punch that in your GPS one time and go there. Check okay. it out. <laughs> If you want to look at it a little bit more, the, the uh, you can look it up online by https double slash c o o r d dot info slash g c eight three c n, or you can just go to. Uh, <laughs> I'm making it all confusing here. You can just go to <laughs> if you're if you're a member of uh, geocaching dot com. You can go to search and search GC83CN. Otherwise, it's on Pine Ridge Airport Polling Road in Naples. What they call, I think, Central Naples up there. There, there you go. I wanted to get that in because who knows? You might see me there. You might see my wife there. Or you might see both of us there together. Maybe. So come on out. Bring your wife, girlfriend, but don't bring your wife's girlfriend or your girlfriend's wife or you know either way that'd either, be a any, bad yeah, idea anyway that's a bad idea don't bring your wife's girlfriend <laughs> or you well <laughs> don't, don't confuse bring both, people don't bring both of them <laughs> okay right. what are we going to talk about today oh man we didn't do any geocaching this weekend uh, good question yeah <laughs> oh yeah another thing too and i'm only ask you what you think of it um couple things i got a couple things going on this week um let me see how much time i got to talk about it one of the things i'll talk to you a little bit about a giveaway okay okay yeah okay all right we did this before um what once maybe twice i don't know i think it was maybe just once once where we get we give away some things on our talk show and the way we did it I mean, it's not going to be anything expensive, but it'll be something, you know, to win. And it's going to be geocaching related. And I've already got my eye on one thing, and I'm not going to tell what it is. But uh, what we're going to do is we're going to get this going and take, you know, like the first three that send me an email claiming their prize will receive that prize. And... uh get a hold of us and then uh we'll we'll get a hold of you to get your uh, name and address and how, where to send it to you know a little initiative thing you know to have people listen to the whole episode but we're going to give you a, a code a code to put in with that so that we know you listen to the radio <laughs> well if they send an email you'll know they did listen to it oh i know but they might have told their neighbor say hey send an email oh, to this guy true 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 yeah yeah you know, and it, and this will take them into the show farther, mm -hmm. where they'll listen to more of the show before they find out what the numbers are. Okay. Okay, yeah. Yeah, so I think that'd be kind of nice. 
In but, other words, they're stuck with us until the end if they want to win. Yeah, if they want to win, but I'm not going to put it all the way to the end. You know, maybe uh, maybe there at the last uh, two minutes or something. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> and now, I, I hate to say this, but this is only going to be for uh, United States only. Aww. I, the, the shipping for oh. overseas is ridiculous. Yes, it is. Yeah, I sent a $12 item to Africa one time, and it cost me, what was it, 40 something dollars? Time By the time, yes. Yeah. Yep. It cost more to ship it than it, what, what, the, what the product was. And so I can't do that. I mean, if you want to pay for shipping, send us the money to pay for the shipping. I will send it anywhere in the world. I know a lot of people over over you know, you know around the world are listening to the radio show we got people in the UK we got people in uh oh boy we did have someone in Africa listening uh what's some other countries that we've had Finland yeah yeah Finland and actually well six years ago yeah yeah something like that so anyway there's what we got in mind for upcoming and also upcoming on February 14th don't forget what that day is. It's the day we're going to have Throwback Thursday. <laughs> and it's a day a lot of wives could get upset about if you don't remember. Uh, don't don't forget, yeah, the other. <laughs> I, I've never forgot. I've never, well, with my wife anyway. <laughs> yeah, see, he loves me. I thought I'm still married. There you That's go. That's one cause of a divorce is forgetting Valentine's Day. <gasps> Don't ever forget it. <laughs> All right. So we think that's going to be... Now, Throwback Thursday, it's going to be on a Thursday, of course. And what we're going to do, we went back into some files and found out some episodes that we started out with back in 2011. So that's, what, eight years ago? Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And... We're going to run them, one one every Thursday, and it's going to be archived. So if you hear of any phone numbers to call, or if you hear of any prizes given away, or uh, if you hear of any events that's going on, anything like that, they're over with. <laughs> right. It's from eight years ago. I know that I know our phone number has changed since then, and we don't give away those gifts no more. But I think we did it a little. Kind of about the same way, I think it was. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So, anyway, that's what's going to happen starting Thursday, February 14th. Which, by the way, don't forget February 14th is also Valentine's Day. Yeah, well, you yeah. said we mentioned that. Yeah, Valentine's Day is February 14th this month. Yeah. Did I mention Valentine's Day? Yes, you did. Okay, I'm going to make sure that everybody heard me mention Valentine's Day the 14th of this month. We don't month. want you to forget. No, we don't. And if, and if don't blame it on us. No, uh, because you was too busy listening to Throwback Thursday or something. Um, that's, that's it, you know. You're on your own. So, anyway, I think that's all the news I had. The only thing in there that uh, I was going to actually talk about for that part. I was going to talk about statistics and we're going to get to that in a minute, but first, my wife has a story to tell you. You're going to let me tell you. I'm going to start it. Now, make things right. I'm going to set it straight. I'm going to get it started. Okay. We had just, we've, we've talked on uh, the internet for a year before we met. That's how we met, was on the, on the internet, on MySpace. And, oh, yeah. And she lived there in Florida, and I lived up in Ohio. And after that year, she came up to visit me for 30 days to see what things was like. You know, how it was going to work out. Well, she ended up going back to Florida, and we decided, you know, what? why not, you know, give it a try. So she came back up to Ohio, and you know, it was funny because we'd only been together now for like two weeks, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. Three, maybe at the most. And I was talking to her daughter, and she told me she had to go geocaching, and I asked her what that was. She said, look it up. Well, okay, so I looked it up. Well, I got into it, interested in it, 
And I felt found some people, you know, on uh, Facebook that were geocachers. One of them was a woman, and we talked and talked and talked, you know. And, and she one one day she asked me if I wanted to go geocaching with her and her sister. I said, well, I don't know. She said, well, you know, just gonna go geocaching, and uh, if you want to go, you can. Ask, ask the wife. I said, okay. Well, I'll ask. Or not a wife, but we, it was a girlfriend back then. Yeah. I said, okay, I will. And here we go. This is what happened. Go ahead and finish a little bit more there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he comes home and he says, well, I have this lady that wants to go geocaching. Really bad, and it's out of state, and she wants to know if I can go. Okay, why not? Go ahead. You sure you don't mind? No, I didn't mind. But then he told me her sister was going to go too. So I'm thinking, okay, you know, two women and James off geocaching in another, another state. Didn't bother me because I trust him, you know. So I had no problem with it. But boy, he sure looked at me funny when I told him, yeah, like I was going to bite his head off or something. Well, then come the question. Okay. I only need to know one thing from you before you go with these two women. And he says, what's that? I said, is she married? Then I got the look. I said, oh, no, no, no. The only reason I wanted to know was because if she was married, I wanted to know that her husband or her boyfriend knew that he was going so there wouldn't be any trouble. I didn't want to see him in the middle of anything. Oh, no, she's not married. She's going with her sister. Okay, that's fine. Go ahead. Well, he goes, he tells me he'll be back by noon. About 2 o'clock, he's calling me. Um, we're going to be a little bit later than I thought. Okay, no problem, you're having fun geocaching, no big deal. Oh, uh, about 5 o'clock, he's calling me again. Well, she decided she wanted to go hunt for some more. Okay, are you having fun? Yeah, alright, fine, no problem, have fun. We ended up in another state. Uh, yeah, y'all were in another <laughs> state. <laughs> And then, it's like, you know, I don't care. You're having fun. I know what you're doing. I trust you. No problem. Have fun. He comes home at 10 o'clock at night. But I brought you pizza. You brought me a pizza. I called the pizza pizza place about 20 minutes before I got home on, on the road. Uh -huh. and I ordered a pizza to be there about the same time. Oh, he's home. bribing me. <laughs> so he walks in the door and he's got this funny look on his face like I am going to scream at him. I looked at him, I said, did you have fun? Yeah. I said, okay, no problem. So for the next day, he's walking on eggshells thinking that I'm going to chew his head off for letting him go with these two women. But then he tells me about a cave that they went to. Before we went to the cave, <laughs> though, I want to I put this in here, too. You, okay. you gave me some trust. I, didn't re I never believed that I, a woman would give me. I left before the sun came up. Mm -hmm. I didn't come home till the sun went down. Yep. Not only went to one state, but ended up going to two states. Yep. And a lot of times I couldn't call her when I told her I would because I didn't have signal where we went. And I figured that. Yeah, but okay, go ahead. <laughs> and, but like I said, it didn't bother me because he had fun. I knew where he was. I knew he was okay, and I trust him, so no biggie. But when he gets home and he's giving me all these looks, he said, well, I have something to tell you. And I go, okay, go ahead. Well... We kind of had to get up in this cave and, and um, well, we had to climb a little bit and, and the only way we could get Angela up was to kind of boost her up. I said, all right. He says, well, she told me to put her hand, my hand on her butt and give her a push. I said, and what did you do? He says, well, I did. And then I told her she could push me up. And I'm like, Y'all couldn't get her, huh? But you had your hand on her butt. Yeah. I said, well, she had to get up there some way. And there goes that look again. <laughs> it's like, I, she is going to kill me. I'll tell you. Yeah, I don't know. It, it it was just one of them things that, you know, you, you're, you're in a situation that far from home. What do you do? <laughs> well, it's like my mom always said. If you don't trust the person you're with, you shouldn't be with them. I, it, you know, I couldn't, didn't have enough phone signal to call call her to ask her if I could put my hand on her butt. <laughs> <laughs> and I would have told you if that's the only way you could do it. Go ahead. So they ended up, both of them, shoving me up there in that <laughs> hole. And, you know, it, uh, we found a geocache. Good thing, huh? 
But the place where we went was uh, was a uh, rated five five, five difficulty, five terrain, and it was a three stage cache. It was on the um, bank on the river in southern uh, Indiana, and the first cache was a hundred feet up. The second cache was a hundred feet from there, and the third cache was a hundred hundred feet or so back down. And where we came in, it, it, having a lot of problem was getting up this hill, this whole, uh, this cliff. It was a cliff. And, I can uh, imagine. And uh, we had rope, and we was pulling each other up with the ropes. The last one would tie our bags onto the rope, and we'd pull our backpacks up, and then we'd throw the rope down to get the last person. And it, it was fun. You know, I mean, I really had a good time. And... When we found that what we thought was the 100 feet down was the, a hole in the ground. And there's the cave. You know, that's what we was all thinking. There's the cave. Okay. So I'm going to go down in it. So they get the rope around me and off down a, the big hole I go. And I hear something down there. It's dark, you know. And I, and I hear something. <laughs> something doesn't sound good. <laughs> something moving. Help, get me out of here. <laughs> I can't, I can't, no, help, pull me up, pull me up. And so they're pulling me up. And here are these two women that I don't know, a whole state away, <laughs> out in the middle of a, a cliff. They could have just let go of the rope. If they got scared enough, they could have. <laughs> <laughs> and the lady, yeah, I don't know what's going on, you know. Uh, I kind of figured, though, that they was pretty nice being that we stopped at, uh, at a coffee shop on the way down there, and they asked me if I wanted to cup of coffee and I said sure and then they told me how much it was <laughs> no. so I had to pay for my own coffee <laughs> but yeah it was, it was a blast though now where were we it was, well you'd gotten home and all that yeah, so that so. was pretty much the end of that story yeah that was the end of it we found the cash we signed the logs and used all kind of, well everything we, we had with us to, to get up that cliff and back down again so, yeah, that was that was, and that was the hardest cache I'd ever found. A five five. Mm-hmm. So we uh, we had fun. Uh, I'm looking here now at my the statistics. There it is, statistics. And I, the statistics tells you, and and if you're if you're um, signed up on geocache.com, you have statistics. I believe you have to be a premium member though to get that. I think so. So anyway, the basic um, tells you, you know, like uh, I found 380 caches since my first cache. My most caches were in July and usually on Saturdays. It tells you how many you know found per day was 0 0.142 caches per day. The longest streak was six consecutive days. Uh, my longest slump without caching, of course, we knew that was going to be big. <laughs> thousand three hundred and five days my mouse died oh no my mouse died ah should have gave it some more cheese uh, yeah <laughs> but anyway it, it it's full of different things the best year was 122 caches in 2014 my best month was 48 caches in july 2014 it's just amazing what they kind of information they keep track of on you here and you, you like I said, if, if you're a premium member, which is twenty nine ninety nine a year, or nine ninety nine every three months, you can pay either way. Yeah, month, month three months at a time or a year at a time, and it tells me well, the most I found three hundred and fifty traditional caches, thirteen unknown caches, twelve event caches, uh, four multi caches, and on down the line, one mega event. So I think that's interesting for for you to see that what what you've been doing while you've been geocaching, and even if you're a basic member and say you're a basic member for however long, and then you decide to go premium, it'll still show everything. Hmm. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, it's, it keeps track of it whether, but you just can't see it. Okay. My uh, longest. You know, they, they have here distance to finds. 
Uh, 56 of them was within 1 to 10 miles from home. Uh, 29 of them was 10 miles to 25 miles. Uh, since we moved to Florida, that kind of jacked up my numbers. <laughs> 256 of them was 500 to 1,000 miles, and 37 of them was 1,000 to... 2,500 miles, which... Ah, uh, I see. Yeah, and when, we right. changed, when we changed our address on geocaching.com to Florida, that right. stopped. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that, that, it made it look good, though, didn't yeah, it? Yeah, it did. <laughs> and uh, also, it tells you the terrain. Uh, average difficulty, average terrain. And there was another one, the uh, fines for each day of the year. And if you get that all filled out, I don't know, it's a big deal, you know. But it blacks, blanks out or darkens each square for each day in each month. And um, it's like in September the 7th I found one. Uh, well, no, September September 7th I found eight. Uh, September 13th I found three. See, it just tells you all kind of information there about your geocaching. Yeah. And... So that that's something that's interesting. I thought I'd bring that up, and then it's got that's basic, and then the maps. If you go to the maps, I need a mouse. It shows that I've only found that my cache is in one country, which is United States, and then it tells you in Ohio, Florida, Kentucky, Georgia, and Indiana. Mm-hmm. And that was, we got our uh, Indiana and Kentucky was on that big trip with the two women. Right. Uh, Georgia was on the way down here. I was going to stop in Tennessee and get one, but we was pulling down through there with a big mule haul in the back of the car, and it was raining. And, and I'm looking on the GPS where this cache is. Not knowing your way around didn't help. I just passed a semi. And just as soon as I got back in the lane, I seen the exit. I hit the brakes a little too hard and trailer kind of did a little fishtail <laughs> I let off of it and kept going I said well we missed that one <laughs> yeah it wasn't worth it uh, if that truck driver listening I didn't mean to scare you <clears throat> but anyway that's what that's all about and I don't know what, what else we got to talk about you got another story there we can put in there no, I can't think anything that was the most interesting story I had the, the worst weather we've done. No. Uh, that was, uh, I think we just told that on, on one of our episodes. Yes. About, about the snowstorm. Yeah, the freezing 10 below and yeah. walking a mile and a half. Yeah, for a parking grab. Uh huh. <laughs> that was an awful long parking grab. I think the shortest walk that we had was eight blocks. Something park. like that. Yeah, at the, at the park it was eight blocks. Mm -hmm. The longest walk was at a park here in Naples. When we wore, you, well, I was out in the, but they got a, they had a trail made out of asphalt going all the way around this park. Mm -hmm. And we, we'd been out there mo most of the day hitting them geocaches in that park. And there was one in this, in the bushes. And I headed towards the bushes to try to find it. Well, crazy critter, she's, she's sitting down. I think he was sitting on the bench or something one year when the, when the guy from the, the park maintenance guy came by in, in the little golf cart. Oh, I was leaning up against the tree, uh huh. Okay, you go ahead and tell that story. Oh, what? The, the one, it was supposed to be like a mile walk and we ended up walking five and a half? Yeah. Yeah, um, we was a little off track on that one. And then the guy came by, luckily, because it would have been another mile and a half walk back, which we could have done, but we probably would have been crawling on our hands and knees by the time we got there. And what was funny is when he pulled up, James is out kind of in the weeds looking for this, and he didn't know he was with me. He asked me, the guy says, do you need a ride? I look over in the bushes, and I say, hey, James, you want a ride? Well, he comes out of the bushes, and I think it kind of surprised the guy a little bit that he was with me. But he was being nice. He could see I was tired and hot and just, I was ready to pass out. Hey, guys, you sure did drive a little fast. You got up in the seat there, and I got on the back end of that thing, facing the back side of it. And 
I was holding on. Man. <laughs> he it, he was wanting to get us back to the car because he could see we needed water. And he took us right to our car too. He mm -hmm. went up, went up around the park and up in there and and right into the parking lot and asked us which car was ours and everything. And you know, he pulled right up to the door of the car. Oh yeah, he was real nice. Yeah, didn't get that cash. But we did get to explain to him what he geocaching was, and he said he had heard about it before, but he wasn't real sure what exactly, it, you know, it was about. Yeah, that's, a lot of people's heard of it or about it, but they don't know what it is. Yeah, and that's what we're trying to do is explain to people. Uh, let's go into our uh, how to get a hold of us. Go ahead. Yeah, that's that's always the hardest part of the show. Uh, <laughs> If you have any questions, comments, uh, stories, or anything like that that you want to have put on our radio, or if you want to be on the radio to tell your story yourself, you can do it uh, three different ways. One, you can give us a call at 239-285-1574, or you can uh, send us a message on Facebook on my podcast radio and that is facebook.com slash my podcast radio and another way is to uh, email us at my podcast radio 2018 at gmail.com easy enough yeah so if you missed that and you didn't have a pencil or pen to write it down with just play this thing over and you'll hear it there you go <laughs> I'll have it in the show notes, too. You know. Good so idea. Listen to it uh, where you can check out the show notes uh, on that page. Uh, they'll be there. So we have fun, and, and we hope a lot of other people out there are starting to kind of get the idea of what it is. And uh, I'm, on, I'm on LinkedIn now, and I had one fellow already asked me what the occasion was, and I sent him some information on it said it sounded interesting we are on our pl platforms also I'm not I'm not going to tell you where they all are if you want to know where we are on a certain one um, contact us and I'll send you the information how to get hold of us on that one but here's the platforms that we're our show is on I'm just going to read to them okay we're on worldwide geocaching podcast on Facebook my podcast radio on Facebook uh, we had a geocaching uh, group page in Ohio that we called Midwest Ohio Geocaching but uh, I changed that here lately it's now called Anywhere USA Geocaching and South Florida Geocaching group page Twitter on my website on YouTube IAIB which is International Association of Internet Broadcasting and Tumblr, T-U-M-B-L-R, Stitcher, that's an app, iTunes is an app, TuneIn, Podbean, we, we were on Podbean to start with, but I switched over to uh, Spreaker, but I'm still putting the shows on Podbean for the ones that was starting to listen to them on there. Uh, my Facebook page, my personal Facebook page, LinkedIn, SoundCloud, Spreaker, radio and that's an app too or a website and you, if you can find us on a page it's a podcasting search page you can search any podcast you want and that's called listennotes.com and so there's there's the platform we got about 15 of them going out there with our uh, shows on it we're everywhere look we're everywhere Woo. <laughs> you're so weird I know it <laughs> And you know it, so we both know it. There you go. That's now how we everybody get knows it. Okay, well, there's 30 minutes, I think, somewhere around in there that we've already put in. Cool. Yeah. We, uh, we've we got 45 minutes on, on our shows now. We uh, went back to um, Podcaster instead of the, the plain Jane. So when you go there, if you go to uh, Spreaker.com slash user, slash worldwide geocaching podcast you'll see where it will say follow and if you follow you'll get an email every week letting you know that our episode is out 
and right now we've only got this one show on there but you'll see uh, it'll say profiles profile episodes shows followers the following and all that but if you go uh, to that page and you click on episodes it'll show you all the episodes we're doing otherwise it just shows you the latest one on the profile on shows uh, only thing we got listed on there is worldwide geocaching podcast now, I've had other ones on there, but I took them off because they had nothing to do with geocaching. Mm -hmm. It was cooking and uh, several other ones. So we just talk, podcast, and things that are not important to geocaching. So that, there you go. Um, I think we're about ready to wrap this one up. Uh, just give everybody a little heads up. If it, your geocaching two-hour trip turns into an all-day thing... Or somebody has to climb a hill and you got to put your hand on their butt to push them up that hill. <laughs> Smile. It's all part of geocaching. <laughs> and on the difficult ones, take a friend or somebody with you. Yeah. Uh, another geocache or something. Don't, don't, don't go off on them difficult ones by yourself. Because that one day, I, if I'd have went by myself, I'd probably still be there. You uh, might be. I went down a hill to get a geocache and... If my wife wasn't there, well, I wouldn't have got back up there. She had to pull me up the hill. With, with a long stick. Long. Long log. Uh, yeah, a uh, tree limb. Tree limb, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I tossed that tree limb up as far as I could, and she reached down as far as she could to get it, and I reached up as far to get the other end, and she pulled me up. And that's why we say a rope is a good thing. We got a rope now. Yes. After that day, we went and got a rope. We did. We there needed that it that day, though. Think about it. What you might need. Mm -hmm. If not that day, think about it the day after you go get that geocache. If you get back up. Or get. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't get stuck for the night, yeah. yeah. Okay, so hey, thanks everybody for listening in. And hope you keep on listening to our episodes. And Soon we'll have somebody on here giving them their story. I got a couple people that want to, but I haven't made the arrangements yet with them. So that's going to be interesting. And we do that on um, a conference call, and that way they can just call their this uh, phone number. I'll give them a phone number and a PIN number to get in on it, and we'll just talk just like we are now. And then I upload it and record it and edit it and everything else. So, all right, until next week, what do they say? Cash on. Cash on. And enjoy your night. See ya.